What's going on guys, Casual Savage here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create videos for Snapchat in Premiere Pro. Now the video you saw at the start is an example of what I actually do every time I upload a video to YouTube. I make it in Premiere Pro, I then send it to my phone and I then upload it to Snapchat. So for example, this video right here is when I showed you how to do a faded blur transition in Vegas Pro 15. Now, Snapchat only allows up to 10 seconds per snap. However, your video can be, I believe, up to 30 seconds, but it also needs to remain below 25 megabytes. So keep that in mind. Now, the first thing we're going to be doing is coming up to sequence and sequence settings. And what we're going to be doing is changing the editing mode to custom. The frame or the time base is going to be set to 24 and the frame size is going to be the complete opposite to what you're seeing now. It's going to be 1080 by 1920. Now, as you can see, this has given us a 9 by 16 ratio, and that's exactly what we want. So that's all done. As you can see, the video is cropped off. What you need to do from here is right click the video, and then you want to select set frame size. So as you can see, this is now the full sc screen. Now the next thing I do, I hold Alt on my keyboard and drag this one up. I hold Alt again and drag this one up. We now have three copies of the same video. So I position the top one by selecting it, coming to Effect Controls, and then where Position is, we're going to simply drag this to the left. And this is going to position it to the top. So just here I'm going to keep it. Then the middle one I leave the same because this is the middle one here. And then the bottom one, I'm going to select it and I'm going to drag this to the right. And as you can see, this is now coming to the bottom. There we go. So this is now what we have. Three of the same videos looking like this. Now the next thing I do is come up to effects, come to video effects, come to blur and sharpen and Gaussian blur. Now since we know the order of the videos, I copied the exact same order it is here in my timeline. So I know the top video in my timeline is going to control the top video I am seeing in the preview. So I'm going to drag and drop Gaussian Blur on that. And I'm also going to drag and drop Gaussian Blur on the bottom video. I'm then going to select the top video. I'm going to come to the effects controls. I'm going to select repeat edge pixels. And I'm then going to bring up the blurriness to 50. I'm then going to do the same to the bottom one. I'm going to select 50 as the blurriness and repeat edge pixels. Now, it is blurred, you may not like it, and you may want it stronger. And me personally, I do as well. So I'm going to change it to 125. Now that's a lot better for me, and I'm also going to do the same to this one. There we go. So now we have one video in focus. If I play it, that's what we have. Now the next thing is adding some text. So click off if you're already on this, come to the type tool and drag out a box. Now you can put it at the top, you can put it at the bottom, it is completely up to you. I'm going to press Ctrl A, I'm going to center it, I'm then going to change my font from here. Now you'll notice if I bring it up, the text has disappeared. All you need to do for, uh, to get it back, come to the move tool and drag your box out so it's bigger. Then just select your text again and you can bring up the text a little bit more. Now of course we need to center this. So to do that really simple, you can see there's an anchor point but it's at the top left. Hold control and drag this to the center. Now holding shift, just move your text and you can see it'll snap into place here. So that's now where I want it to be. If you scroll down on the effects you can also add a stroke and I'm going to add a black stroke so you can see the text more visible in case colors do uh, contrast in a bad way. And then you need to make sure your text is all the way for the duration of your video. And then the final thing I do is add on an arrow, which is an animation of it going up. So I'm gonna drag this onto video track five. Uh, audio, there's no audio to it, so it doesn't really matter, but this is the animation you can see, that's what we got. Once again, I'm gonna right click this video, I'm gonna select set to frame size. I'm then going to select it, come to position, and drag this down. Now, yes, it's currently a green screen. We're going to get rid of it. Come over to the effects. From here, come to video effects. And from video effects, what you want to do is come down to keying, 
and I am going to be using the Ultra Key. Just drag and drop it onto the green screen clip. From there where it says Key Color, select the Color Picker and select the background. Just like that it's gone. We can also trim this down because it's not needed to go any further. Now if I play it through, this is what we have. Just like that. Really nice and simple. The background's blurred here so the arrow is really visible to see. The background's blurred at the top so the text is easy to see and the video in the center is in 100% focus so viewers know what they're getting into when they watch the video. So then of course after you've made your video press X to bring up the markers, press Control M to bring up the export and then what we're going to be doing is having the format at H.264. The preset you can keep at match source high bitrate. Um, and then if you come down here under the video section, just make sure everything is uh, the same as your video that we've done in the sequence. You can change the uh, bitrate coding to VBR2 pass. And then you can see right now, I mentioned at the start that your estimated file size has to be under 25 meg. Now ours is at 12, that is perfect. Now in some cases, yours may be higher than 25. So how you get away with it, um, come to where the bitrate settings are and where the target bitrate is, bring this to 6 or something and bring the maximum bitrate to 8. As you can see, that's lowered it by 5 megabytes and it's now 7 megabyte. Now I can keep mine at 10 and 12. Uh, one thing you do have to remember about bringing down the target bitrate and the maximum bitrate, you will be losing some quality, but it won't be too noticeable. But if you go below 6, then it will become noticeable. Once again, I also recommend use maximum render quality. And then you're good to go. Simply export. It's going to be super quick because it's a short clip. And the way you get it onto your phone or iPad or whatever you want to upload it to Insta uh, to Snapchat with, what you do is simply email it to yourself or just upload it to Google Drive. And then you've got it onto your phone. Just like that. Super, super simple.